In this interview, Peter Cook had just returned from holiday after touring America with Dud. I asked him if he felt threatened by the violence in American cities. Actually, the nearest I got to being killed was in Chicago, which is... How did that arise? Well, I was in my bedroom at 8 in the morning, which is unusual. Yes. And... Uh, that hangs a tail, yes. I woke up and felt uh, a presence in the room. In fact, two presences. <laughs> and I looked down at the bottom of the bed, and there were two men of a non-Caucasian origin going through my suitcases. And uh, it's fairly obvious what they're doing, namely robbing me. But I came up with the two stupidest remarks I've ever come up with. First of all, I said, what the are you doing? As if I thought they were giving room service, you know. <laughs> and then they, um, they rushed out of the room, carrying with them a tape recorder come radio. And I said, drop that. <laughs> I've been watching too much TV. <laughs> and he dropped it on the bed. I was fully armed with one soiled Kleenex. <laughs> then I rang downstairs very calmly. I said, um, two gentlemen probably coming down the elevator or the side stairway, uh, one about 185 pounds, six, one dark black, one lighter skinned black around about 161 pounds, five, ten, etc. I was reeling off all these figures from the streets of San Francisco, you know. <laughs> Please apprehend them, this is Mr. Cook, room 5B or whatever it was. Totally calm, they escaped, the police arrived. I was having a good time. I said, really, don't want to waste your time because I could be dead. Uh, why not go and save somebody on the street or whatever? And they said, no, they took fingerprints and everything. I was totally calm. About five o'clock in the evening, I fainted. <laughs> but do you find yourself, when you're in America, as I do, I've not been over there for a long a time as you have, and I wonder if you ever acclimatise yourself to it. But my first reaction to America, one that never leaves me in a fortnight there, is, particularly New York, is, is, is one of fear, actually. It's, it's kind of a hostile environment. Well, I, you know, I don't usually notice that after a flight. Um, <laughs> the first thing I did when I arrived in New York, I hadn't been to it for about six years, was to um, go to Times Square, which is uh, a fairly hostile environment. And it said, it's a seedy part of New York, and it said, live nude models, 25 cents. I thought, well, that's... Uh, <laughs> I've tried to calculate it back, it's about 4p. <laughs> you know, it's uh, better than Soho. So I, I, I popped in there and got 25 cents, gave, it, gave them 25 cents, and walked in through a door. And there was um, a lady, naked, revolving on a small pedestal. And she looked very bored, and I said, uh, this must be um, rather a boring job. She says, it is. I said, how, how long do you do it? She said, about five hours at a time. And I said, do you just revolve? She said, yes, sir. Uh, I occasionally yawn, but uh, <laughs> mainly I revolve. And I said, this must be very tedious, and how much do you get paid? I had quite a chatty conversation with this lady. And I suddenly seized from behind by two enormous men who asked me, not very politely, if I wanted to be killed. <laughs> and I said, uh, not at the moment, no. <laughs> so they said, get the out of here. And I'd gone in through the wrong door. What I should have been doing was peeping in through a tiny window. There's about 40 <laughs> tiny windows. <laughs> and as, as I left, I saw these feverish eyes peering through these tiny windows, obviously thinking they're going to see something more than they'd actually paid for. <laughs> and uh, I left rather rapidly, and the men followed me up Times Square, and I was retreating to the safety of my hotel. And they repeated their threat to kill me very convincingly and i paused by a policeman i said these two gentlemen are following me and they said they want to kill me um i think my best plan is to get back to the hotel I said yeah don't for christ's sake involve me in crime <laughs> well you're right for two years what kind of perspective does it give you on, on life back in this country i don't have many impressions i've just been inside watching watching telly and reading the paper and wondering about my roots <laughs>